Yes, I promise not to do too many slides because I usually don't like slides and I hate slides. Um, so I'll mostly talk about what I need to talk about. Uh, so my name is Ignacio Gomez. I work at SUSE um, and we have a booth downstairs. Uh, it's not downstairs, it's actually right next door. If you guys want to come and talk to us about what we're doing, uh, we have a distribution of a Cloud Foundry, which is actually quite interesting. So my role is I'm based out of EMEA, so I live in uh, close to London. And I'm visiting partners and customers um, all the time and just talking um, kind of what their problem is. And about, about 18 months ago, um, everybody started talking about Kubernetes, how great it was, and all that, because it really solves their problem from an infrastructure side, because they're able to get so much optimization from an um, infrastructure perspective. And then uh, Troy, our product manager, who's sitting right over there and looking at his laptop, um, he, he basically said, wouldn't it be cool if we could actually deploy uh, Cloud Foundry directly on, uh, on a container platform? And that was actually quite interesting because you get a very small memory footprint and uh, you kind of replace Kubernetes with Bosch because one of the big things uh, Bosch gives you is scalability and resiliency. And we kind of said Kubernetes was actually quite interesting for that. Um, so now we're able to uh, deploy uh, Cloud Foundry directly on top of Kubernetes. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can deploy um, on-premise uh, with your own Kubernetes uh, version, or if you're on Google, you can deploy on GKE, which we actually just started supporting about three days ago, which is nice. Um, and, and, and it just kind of builds a very good story for a customer because uh, at the end of the day, we're kind of really mirroring um, kind of the benefits of Cloud Foundry, which is great developer productivity with the ma um, major benefits of Kubernetes, which is really optimizing uh, the infrastructure and really optimizing the footprint. So you get a very good um, kind of best of, best of both worlds. And at the same time, you really solve a problem for the customer, which is actually you don't have to maintain different platforms. You can just maintain a Kubernetes platform do your other um, kind of containers there and kind of happy days. But then if you're uh, building 12-factor type applications, you can use uh, Cloud Foundry for that because that's kind of what it's good for and it scales quite nicely. Um, and and you're, yeah, you're, you're kind of able to uh, do that. Um, from the other side, uh, Suze, we're actually working on three main um, projects from Cloud Foundry. One is obviously the containerization that I've been talking about where we containerize the uh, runtime. The other one is uh, Project Irene. So at the end of this month, we're coming out with uh, 1.4, uh, which is our version of Cloud Foundry. And you're gonna be able to um, use a uh, Kubernetes scheduler instead of Diego. So you'll have, to, you'll have the option to use either w one or the other. It's not gonna be production grade yet because that's coming out. That's a technical preview, yes. Um, and the other one that we're working on is Strato, which is nice because you can be running different versions of, um, of Cloud Foundry. So you can have IBM, you can have PCF, and you can have SUSE, and, and it's all under one single pane of glass. And that gives you kind of a nice kind of way to, to manage it from an operator perspective. At the end of the day, everything I've talked about Kubernetes, the developer doesn't care about, and he shouldn't because that's just the way it works. But from an operator side, you can just kind of reutilize all those skills that, that you have from a Kubernetes perspective to manage the infrastructure side and get those great optimizations. Yeah. Good. I think that was fast. <laughs> <laughs>